Till now, we've been looking at data as if all the data that we need for a particular analysis is going to come in the form of a single table. Right? So that's, that's how we've always been looking at things till now. In reality, that's not how things actually happen. Most of the time, what happens is that data is split across multiple tables and we need to combine them for analysis. Okay, now combining data sets can get pretty tricky. And once again, dplyr comes to our rescue by providing lots of useful functions that we can use to very quickly combine data sets. Let's jump right into a small example that will make everything clear. And so in this lesson, lesson 6.1, I give you an introduction to what are called relational data. Okay, so that's a very specific way of dividing data into multiple table tabular forms. Right, it's uh, taking the data and splitting it in, into multiple tables so as not to have to repeat the same information over and over again. Right, so in terms of storage, we want to store the data like that. But of course, when we want to perform analysis, we'll bring the data together as and when necessary. Okay, so data split across many tables or data frames. So let's take an example. Let's say we've got a scenario in a company where we've got many suppliers and we show an example of uh, five suppliers here, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. And every supplier has a supplier number, SNO, supplier name, S name, and status of the supplier and the city in which the supplier is located. Now, for the most part, we're not going to be looking at these columns, but they're there just to fill out the table. Similarly, we have another table called parts. Okay, and again, we've got the part number and there are six parts in this example. And we've got part number, part name, which is P name, color, which is the color of the part, the weight of the part, and the city in which the part is located for whatever purpose, you know, just to have an additional column. Okay, and again, we have another table called projects. Okay, that is projects where parts are used and so on. And there are seven projects, J1 through J7. The J number is the column that indicates the number of the project. Once again, the projects have names. So the J name is the column which tells us what the name of a project is. And once again, every project is in a particular city. Okay, so that is suppliers, parts, projects. And then we have a table that has information about shipments that were made by uh, various suppliers of various parts to various projects. Okay, so that's what we are looking at here, shipments. So shipments have, of course, supplier number, that is the supplier who made the shipment, part number, the part that was shipped, and project number, the project for which the shipment was made. And here is the date of the shipment, and here is the quantity that was shipped. Okay, so if you take a look at the second row, the second row says supplier two supplied uh, supplier one actually. Okay, the second row tells us that supplier one supplied part P one to project J four on this date, and seven hundred units were shipped. Okay, so a shipment is talking not only about a particular supplier part or project. It's talking about the combination of the supplier part and project, right? So supplier one, you can see, made a shipment, uh, the first and the second shipment. The first shipment was to project one. The second shipment was to project four. Supplier two made many, many shipments, etc. Okay. Similarly, part one was shipped to project one as well as to project four. And part three was shipped to project one and project two and project three and four and five and seven. In fact, part three was shipped to quite a few projects, etc. Okay, so this is our data. Now clearly, if you want to perform an analysis of shipments, right, you might need information from the other tables. You know, for example, uh, how many shipments were made by suppliers located in London? Okay, now that question cannot be answered just by looking at shipments. We'll have to go to the supplier table and find out who are the suppliers located in London, and then come to the shipments table and take only their shipments and find that out. Okay, or alternately, we want to do an analysis of, uh, tell me all the shipments where the suppliers and the parts were located in the same city. Okay, so if you want to do these kinds of analyses, you will have to 
take data from multiple tables and then perform the analysis okay now it would be inefficient to put all of the information in the ship in one single table right that is because you may the shipments table for example may have a hundred thousand rows okay but your company may have only six or seven ship uh, suppliers okay now to repeat the supplier information like supplier name and status and city every time the supplier occurs would be pointless it would be highly redundant because the same information would keep repeating again and again and again because supplier a particular supplier may have made thousands of shipments okay so to keep data in a form that is least redundant people divide the data across multiple uh, multiple tables this is how data is stored inside databases okay now therefore for your analysis your data is going to come from relational databases so it is quite uh, possible that you might get the data in this format right but then to perform our analysis we may need to combine the data from multiple tables combine the related data from multiple tables in order to achieve what we are trying to achieve okay so this is what I am calling as relational data the word relational comes into place because this is how relational databases are created uh, in general okay I'm not getting further into that theory okay so we might have questions like this who's the what is the name of the supplier who made the shipment on the first row right so if you take the shipment on the first row we know that supply number is s1 you want to find the supplier's name scoot over to the suppliers table and see that s1 is Smith so we can say that Smith made the first shipment in fact Smith also made the second shipment you may have another question overall how many supplier shipments did supplier Clark make okay so we scoot over here find out that Clark uh, the supplier Clark is supplier s4 and then we can come here and find out which are all the shipments that were made by s4 and we can answer that question okay so notice that answering these questions requires us to get data from more than one table we can answer the question by looking at just one table right so this process of going across multiple tables is what is called joining and that is what we'll be looking at very shortly okay so how many units of part cam did supplier Jones ship okay so to answer that question because we are only given the part name and we are given the supplier name okay which means we cannot answer this question just by looking at shipment you'll have to look at shipments suppliers and parts so data from three tables have to come together before we can answer a question like this let us now delve a little deeper into this whole process so to take the first question what is the name of the supplier who made the shipment on the first row okay shipment on the first row of the shipment table right so shipment table is right here we see that the supplier on that row is s1 so what we do is we take the suppliers table and see that s1 supplier s1 because this shipment table only has the supplier number it doesn't have all the other details of that particular supplier to get all the other details of the supplier all we have to do is to see take the supplier number s1 go into the suppliers table and look up whatever other details we want so it turns out that s1 is Smith right the name of the supplier whose number is s1 is Smith and therefore Smith made the shipment on the first row okay so another question overall how many shipments did Clark make right so once again we've got suppliers and we've got shipments right so Clark again as we can see here is s4 so we go into the shipments table and see that uh, we've got two rows for supplier s4 there's only two rows in which the supplier is actually s4 and therefore we can answer this question by saying Clark made two shipments okay again here we are assuming that all of the tables are complete there are no other rows than what we are actually showing you so of course we are pretending in reality these things are likely to be very big uh, but to get the concepts clear it's easy it's better to look at something where we can see the whole picture okay so what we are going to do now is to delve deeper into all of these concepts and to do that I have created some uh, CSV files with 
uh, from which you can create those tables. For example, there is a, a table called suppliers.csv. I mean, there is a CSV file, suppliers.csv, parts.csv, projects.csv, and shipments.csv. And if you read them, you can read them into these various tables. Okay. Notice I'm using read underscore CSV. Uh, that's because I've loaded tidyverse and read underscore CSV is part of tidyverse. So the two questions that we considered so far, or that is, who's the supplier? What is the name of the supplier who made the shipment on the first row? And also, how many shipments did uh, Jones make? Right? We realized that in order to answer those questions, we had to combine data from the shipments table and the suppliers table. Okay. So, as I said earlier, we joined the two tables to get the answer. Okay. So let's understand what exactly joining is and how it works. Okay. So I'm taking an example here. Produce a report of shipments with the supplier names at, appended to each shipment. Right now, the shipments table only has the supplier number. Now, what we want to do is to also append the supplier name to each shipment. Okay. So here is our shipment table. Okay. So what we are now going to do is for every row of the shipment table, we are going to bring in the corresponding row of the supplier table and append it. Okay. So literally, what we are going to do is, well, we see that the first row, the shipment in the first row was made by supplier S1. So let's bring along the data of supplier S1 and tag it along to the first row. Okay. So the second row was also made by S1. So let's tag along S1's data to the second row as well. Okay, and so on. So the third row, the shipment was made by S2. So we tagged along S2. In fact, several of these rows, the shipment was made by S2. So we have tagged along S2 and so on and so on. Okay, we've got S3 and S4. We've got them as well. Okay, so that's, so this is what the process of joining is. Okay, so as you can see, when you're joining two tables, what you're doing is you're using a particular column as the common column. Right. In other words, the supplier number of the shipments table is what we are using to combine it with the suppliers table. Right. After all, when we added the, we've got supplier S1 in the first row, and therefore we brought in the information of supplier S1 from the suppliers table. Right. So the criterion for which particular row of the suppliers table to add to the first row was based on the matching supplier number. Okay, so that's an important consideration that whenever you're joining two tables together, you will always join on a particular column or sometimes you may join on a set of columns, right? Because uh, it's we will see later examples where it's a set of columns that identifies something. Okay, so there is a join is always happening by a particular column or by particular collection of columns. That is why I've highlighted the two columns here to show you that that is the column on which the two tables are being joined. Okay. So in R, the way you would do that. So this initially the tab table we saw was shipments, but now what you're seeing the combined table is the result of shipments being joined with suppliers on the supplier number. Right? Because whenever you say join, you're talking about joined on what column? This time it was joined on the supplier number column. So what you're seeing, the whole thing you're seeing here is the result of joining shipments with suppliers. Okay. Now in R, in dplyr, the way you'll do the join is I'm saying shipments and the function we use for joining is called inner join. Right? Now you may wonder why is this word inner coming here? Okay, we'll see examples later of joins that are not inner joins. For now, just take it as if that's that's what it is. Okay, so we're saying shipments inner join suppliers. In other words, join the shipments table and the suppliers table. Okay, now you may wonder, you because till now I've been saying, look, when you join tables, you not only indicate the tables you're joining, but you also have to indicate the column on which the join is taking place. Why did I not mention the column here? Okay. Now, if you don't mention the column, what join, inner join function is going to do is to simply join them on columns that have the same name. 
Okay, so this the shipment table has a column called SNO. The supplier table also has a column called SNO, supplier number. So implicitly, it will join the two tables on the columns that have the same name. Now it is possible that the columns may have different names. In which case, there is other syntax we will show you later on how to join them. Okay, so that's why we did not have to mention what we are joining by. Okay, so the result is this, right? So you've got all the columns from shipments, you've got all the columns from suppliers, and that's exactly what's going on.